Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about covered calls. Now this was actually requested by Dreamcore. Dreamcore says, just started doing covered calls. Would love for you to break it down some more in a video if you haven't already. Love the content bro, thank you. Thanks for your kind comment Dreamcore and as per your request I'm making this video to talk about covered calls. Now let's talk about how to sell covered calls. You're going to buy 100 shares of a stock and then you're going to sell a call option using the 100 shares as collateral. So buy 100 shares, sell a call option. That's essentially what covered calls are. You buy 100 shares and then you select a call option to sell and using those 100 shares as collateral. Now, what are the advantages of covered calls? Why would you want to do covered calls? Well, you get paid a premium for selling the covered calls. So, let's say you work as a shoe salesman in a shoe store, and then every time you sell shoes to a customer, you get paid a small amount of money for that sale. Or, for example, real estate agents, every time they successfully sell a house, they get paid a small percentage of the entire cost of the house. Things like that, right? So like when you sell something, you get paid a small amount of money for selling it, like a small premium for selling your covered calls. So that's why people do covered calls is because they're getting paid an amount of money for selling the, the, the call option. Another example that some people use is um, being in a casino, but you're not the one gambling, you're the dealer. So you have a bunch of gamblers and you're the one dealing and sometimes the gamblers would give you a tip, right? They tip the dealer. Sort of like that. So you're not the one buying call options and betting on whether a price will go uh, up or not for a stock. You're the one selling the covered call and collecting a premium for selling the covered call. And you're lowering your cost basis for the 100 shares that you bought. So you buy 100 shares and because you're selling a covered call, remember, you're getting paid a small premium for it. So the total cost that you're spending goes down. The cost of the 100 shares, and then you get some money for selling the covered call, so the total cost goes down. Now, what are the disadvantages? First off, it can be expensive to buy 100 shares of a stock. So let me show you an example. Let's go with Amazon, for example because I have covered calls on Amazon right now. Amazon is at $105.45. If I were to buy 100 shares of Amazon, that would be over $10,000. Now, for some people who have very big accounts, perhaps $10,000 is not that much. But for beginners, when I was beginning, I did not I definitely did not have $10,000 just lying around. So $10,000 could be a lot of money for some people, but that's how much it would cost to buy 100 shares of Amazon. So covered calls can be expensive depending on what stock you're looking at. But if you're looking at, for example, a cheaper stock like SoFi, because I have covered calls on SoFi as well, SoFi is at $5.13 per share. So if I were to buy 100 shares of SoFi, that would cost around $500, which is much more manageable. But again, some people don't really have hundreds of dollars just lying around. So it really depends on uh, you know how much money you have to work with. It can get expensive doing covered calls because you need 100 shares of a stock. Another disadvantage is, uh, sorry, another disadvantage of covered calls is you're limiting your potential gains. So let's say you buy 100 shares of, say, SoFi. Let's say I buy 100 shares of SoFi, which is currently at $5.13. And then I sell a covered call at the $5 strike price. If on the expiration date, SoFi goes to like $20 or something like that, something crazy, like it goes way, way up in price. Because I sold a covered call at the $5 strike price, anything above $5 
is going to give me the exact same gains. It's not going to change whether it's at $6 at expiration or at $10. It, it could go up to $100 per share. It's going to be the same as if it were at $6 at expiration. You get, what I'm, you, get, you get what I'm saying? So you're getting paid a premium, but in return for that, you're limiting what you can gain if the price of the stock were to shoot up way high at expiration. So that's the trade-off. You're limiting your potential gains in order to collect the small premium. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this by going to optionsprofitcalculator.com, going to covered call, which is what this video is about. You enter the information, like the stock, what price you bought it at, and which call you're selling. And then we're going to look at the potential profit and loss. Okay, here we are on optionsprofitcalculator.com. Over here in the basic category, I'm going to click on covered call. This will bring us to our covered call calculator. First, we select a stock. For example, Amazon. AMZN, click on get price. The current price of Amazon is $105.45. To do a covered call, we need to buy 100 shares. So 100 shares of Amazon at the current price will cost us $10,545. So we buy 100 shares and then we sell a call. So we're going to write and select an option, pick an expiration date. I'm going to pick October 20th of this year. And then we pick a strike price. Let's go with the $100 strike price. So we bought 100 shares of Amazon and we're selling the October 20th $100 call. For the range, let's look at 50 to 200. Click on calculate. And this will show us our profit loss calculator. At expiration, October 20th, if Amazon is at $100 per share, we made $903 profit. Now again, covered calls limit the max potential gain you can have. So let's say, for example, Amazon explodes upwards to $150 per share. Because you have a covered call, you will still have the same profit, $903. Now let's say Amazon at expiration goes up to $200 per share. Again, because of your covered call, your max profit is still going to be $903. So as you can see, doing a covered call limits the max gains you can potentially earn if Amazon were to explode way, way higher than the current price. If it explodes upwards way past the strike price that you choose, you can lose out on money because if you weren't doing a covered call and you just had the 100 shares, you would have made more money. So there's a trade-off, right? If you expect the price of the stock you're investing in to explode upwards and go very, very high, it wouldn't really make sense to do a covered call because if it goes way past the strike price that you chose, you missed out on the potential money you could have earned if you didn't have a covered call. But the reason that people do covered calls is because they're making a premium, right? They're getting paid some money for doing the covered call. And because of that, for example, we bought... 100 shares of Amazon at $105.45 in this example. But at expiration, if it actually goes down in price to $100, we still make money. We still made a $903. So covered calls, you could potentially make money without the price of the stock even going up. Even if the stock price goes down, if it is at the strike price you chose or above, for in, for in this example, $100, you still make a profit. Hell, even if it goes down to $95 a share, you still make $403 in profit at, at expiration. So, there's a trade-off, right? There's going to be pros and cons to this. If you expect 
the price of a stock to go way, way past the strike price that you chose, it doesn't make sense to do a covered call because you're limiting the max gains. But if you expect, if you expect the price to stay the same or be around the strike price that you chose or even a little bit below, it might make sense to do a covered call because you're earning a premium for selling your covered call. So that's basically what the profit and loss chart would look like in this example. Let's do another example. Let's say, for example, Tesla. Type in Tesla, click on get price. So the current price of Tesla is at $170. If we buy 100 shares of Tesla at the current price, it will cost us $17,000. Now we're going to choose the call to sell. This time, let's pick, oh, I don't know, uh, December, December 15th of this year. And then we choose the strike price. We're going to choose the $200 strike price. So we bought 100 shares of Tesla and we're selling the December 15th $200 call. For the range, I'm going to look at 100 to 300. Click on calculate. Now, as you can see, at expiration, if Tesla is at $200 per share, which we chose, it's going to be a $4,788 profit. Because of the covered call, we're limiting the max gain we can have, right? If it goes past the $200 strike price that we chose, if it goes to $266, it's still going to be the same profit. If it goes to $294, it's still going to be the same profit. You get what I'm saying? So whatever strike price you chose, in this example, $200, if it goes past $200, it's going to be the same amount of profit no matter what. Tesla could go up to a million dollars per share in this example, and it's still going to be the same profit no matter what. Now, in exchange for limiting the potential max gain, we're getting paid a premium. In this case, we're getting paid $1,788. For selling this covered call. So it's a trade-off. You, you really got to think about this. If it jumps up way, way past the strike price that you chose, you're missing out on some money that you could have made if you had not done a covered call. But if it stays at $200 or below your strike price, you just collect the premium. You get, you get paid that small amount of money for selling your covered call. So you got to weigh the, the pros and cons, you know, the costs and benefits here. Now, the reason I sell covered calls is because I don't really depend on the prices of my stocks going way, way up. I just want to collect the premium. So... <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm buying 100 shares of stocks and I'm selling covered calls to basically collect the premium. And I don't really care if it actually jumps up way past the uh, strike prices that I chose. For example, Amazon, I'm selling a $110 call, right? Amazon $110 call. Um, expiring on 616. If Amazon jumps up to $200 per share, I'm willing to take that hit, right? I I'm willing to take the risk that there's potentially going to be a huge jump in the share price of Amazon. I'm willing to deal with those consequences just to collect my premium. So that's why people do covered calls, is to collect that premium. To collect that small amount of money that you get for selling your covered call. 
and they're willing to give up any potential max gains if the share price were to exponentially increase, right? If the share price would to go way, way up past the, the strike price that they, they, that they chose, they're willing to take that uh, disadvantage in order to collect the premium. So that's essentially what covered calls are, and that's how you use them, and that's what the advantages and disadvantages are. So I personally use covered calls a lot. You can use them too if you don't think that the stocks that you're investing in are going to jump up way past the strike price that you choose. If you do expect the price of the stock to jump up way past the strike prices that you choose, it wouldn't make sense to do covered calls. If you really honestly believe and you're depending on the fact that, um, you know, the price of Disney will go up to $400 a share by the expiration date, it doesn't make sense to do a covered call on that point, you know? So you do covered calls if you don't expect the price to go up way past your strike prices. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something from this. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.